Hey champs of examsnet welcome to the question series of examsnet students you must have explored our website www.examsnet.com this site is a great place for you to practice your entrance exam question paper because here you will find so many entrance exam question papers along with their detailed pdf solutions and you must download our app the link is available in the description box for better preparation of your exams so today students we will be solving j 2023 6th april shift 1 question paper in this particular video i'll be solving physics part of the paper so students here we go the question number 31 of this question series says that the kinetic energy of an electron alpha particle and a proton are given as 4k 2k and k respectively the de broglie wavelength associated with electron alpha particle and the proton are as follows so we have to find the wavelength of what electron alpha particle and the proton students from the de broglie relation we know that the lambda is equals to h over p where lambda is the de broglie wavelength h is the planck's constant and p is the momentum and this momentum and kinetic energy relation is given by p is equals to under root of 2 me so we have to find the wavelength for electron alpha particle and proton so let us say lambda e for electron it will be equals to h over under root of 2 into mass of electron and its kinetic energy is kinetic energy is given 4k 4k for proton lambda p will be equals to h over under root 2 into mass of proton and its kinetic energy that is k and for alpha particle it will be equals to h over under root 2 into mass of alpha particle into its kinetic energy that is given as 2k and we know that the mass of alpha particle is four times the mass of proton so lambda alpha will become h over under root of 2 into 4 into mass of proton into 2k so from these three relation that is lambda equals to h over under root 2 me 4k lambda p equals to h over 2 mp into k and lambda alpha equals to h over under root 2 4 mp into 2k we find that lambda of electron is greater than the lambda of proton is greater than the lambda of alpha so the question so the solution d is correct for this question got it since mass of electron is very less than mass of proton so we reach to this solution that is lambda electron is greater than lambda proton is greater than lambda alpha got it yeah so moving on to our second question that is question number 32 which says that given below are two states man one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as reason r so assertion a is earth has atmosphere whereas moon doesn't have any atmosphere so this statement is very true ki earth has atmosphere since we know that the gravitational force on earth is very large as compared to the gravitational force on the moon so the gravitational force pulls down all the gas molecules in the down downward direction so the atmosphere so the earth has atmosphere whereas the moon does not have any atmosphere and the reason behind this is given as the escape velocity of moon is very small as compared to that of the on earth since we know that the escape velocity is equals to under root 2 gm over r that is under root 2 gr 
so since the radius of the moon is smaller than the radius of the earth so we find that the escape velocity of moon is small as compared to the escape velocity of the earth so the atmosphere escapes out from moon as compared to that of the earth so the reason which is given as the escape velocity on the moon is small as compared to that on the earth is the correct reason for this assertion a so the correct answer of this question is answer a that is both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of a got it yeah so moving towards our next question that is a source supply heat to a system at a rate of 1000 watt if the system performs work at a rate of 200 watt the rate at which the internal energy of the system is so student this question is directly from the first law of thermodynamics that is dq is equals to du plus dw since we are given the rate so dividing this equation by dt dq by dt equals to du by dt plus dw over dt so we have to find the rate at which the internal energy of the system increase so du by dt is equals to dq by dt minus dw by dt it is 1000 watt minus 200 watt equals to 800 watt so the correct answer is c 800 watt got it now moving to our next question question number 34 of this series this question says that a small ball of mass m and density rho is dropped in a viscous liquid of density rho naught so the question is directly from the viscosity after some time the ball falls with a constant velocity what is the viscous force on the ball we have to find the viscous force that is acting on the ball so let us imagine this question as suppose we are given a system and a ball is there and it is moving in downward direction since the velocity is constant so the net force will be equals to zero the force that is acting in the downward direction is the gravitational force mg and the upper direction the forces are viscous force plus buoyant force so we can write is at the mg will be equals to fv plus fb the viscous force plus point force since in this question we have to find the viscous force that is acting on the ball so fv will be equals to mg minus fb it will be equals to mg minus the point force will be equals to volume of the ball into density rho naught into g gravity so it will be equals to since uh, students as we can see that all the answers are given in terms of mg so we have to write this uh, buoyant force also in terms of mg that is mg minus the volume of the ball can be written as mg over density rho into rho naught into gravity g so taking mg common from both we get mg 1 minus rho naught over rho into sorry 1 minus rho naught over rho so the viscous force fv is equals to mg 1 minus rho naught over rho so the correct answer is c that is the viscous force f is equals to mg 1 minus rho naught over rho now the next question is question number 35 that is a small block of mass 100 gram is tied to a spring of a spring constant 7.5 newton per meter and length is given as 20 centimeter the other end of the spring is fixed at a particular point a if the block moves in a circular motion on a smooth horizontal surface with constant angular velocity is given as 5 radian per second the tension in the spring is so we have to find the value of t that is tension now according to question we are given a mass 
m equals to 100 gram it is attached to a spring and this spring is attached to a block uh, other end let us say this is point is a since this spring it is attached to the mass 100 gram so there will be a elongation in the spring its initial length l naught is given as 20 centimeter and this spring constant k is given as 7.5 newton per meter and angular velocity is given as 5 radian per second so there will be an elongation in the spring when it is doing the circular motion okay since it is moving in a circular path now so when it is doing circular motion there will be elongation in the spring and this elongation will be equals to l naught plus x and uh, a force is acting towards the center that force will be equals to k x tension force so this tension force kx will be equals to the centripetal force m omega square into this l naught plus x so here in this question we are asked to find the tension so simply tension t will be equals to kx but we don't know the value of x so first we have to find the value of x so we can find this as kx is equals to m omega square l naught plus m omega square x so kx minus m omega square x will be equals to m omega square l naught taking x common k minus m omega square will be equals to m omega square l naught so x will be equals to m omega square l naught over k minus m omega square so putting this equation one value of x in this so we get t will be equals to k into m omega square l naught over k minus m omega square now just putting the values which are given in the question t will be equals to k k is given as 7.5 into mass is given as 100 gram 100 gram means 0 0.1 into omega square omega given as 525 into l naught that is l is given as 20 centimeter means 0 0.2 over k k is 7.5 minus m mass is 0 0.1 into omega square 25 so after solving this we get t equals to 0 0.75 newton so the correct answer for this question is answer a okay now the next question is question number 36 which says that a particle is moving with constant speed in a circular path suppose the particle is moving in a circular path let us say this is the circular path and a particle is moving in this circular path with a constant speed let us say it is moving with a speed v when the particle turns at an angle of 90 degree let us say at first the particle is moving like this and since it is turned by an angle of 90 degree now it will be like this the ratio of the instantaneous velocity to its average velocity is given as ratio of instantaneous velocity to its average velocity is given as pi over x root 2 so we have to find this value of x okay so let us say the radius of this circle is r this is also r so the this this r root 2 will be the displacement okay so we know that velocity is equals to displacement over time so this average velocity will become displacement r root 2 over time we have to find time since time will be equals to x over v 
So x is the displacement since the circumference of this circle is 2 pi r and it is quarter of that circumference. So this t will be equals to pi r by 2 over velocity. We are taking velocity as v. So we can write it as time pi r over v. Okay. So this average ratio of this v over average velocity will become pi r over r root 2 and this ratio is given in the question as pi over x root 2 pi over x root 2 okay so pi over x root 2 pi uh, sorry here pi r by 2 so we also write it here v average over average will equals to pi r by 2 this r cancels this r so this will become pi over 2 root 2 will be equals to pi over x root 2 so here we can say that the value of x x is equals to 2 so the correct answer for this question is answer b that is x is equals to 2 so moving to our next question question number 37 that is two resistance are given r1 is equals to 10 plus minus 0 0.5 ohm and r2 is given as 15 plus minus 0 0.5 ohm we have to find the percentage error in measurement of the equivalent resistance when they are connected in parallel. So here given that these are connected in parallel. So using the formula 1 over R is equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Okay, now finding its error. So we can write as delta R r square is equals to minus delta r1 square over r1 square minus delta r2 square over r2 square now we can write is at equals to delta r1 square over r1 square plus delta r2 square over r2 square got it so here delta r1 0 0.5 is what delta r1 and here 0 point is what delta r2 now we have to find this percentage error in the resistance okay so we have to find the value of delta r over r so Taking 1R from here to here, we get delta R over R is equals to R into delta R1 square over R1 square plus delta R2 square over R2 square. Got it? So we have first we have to find this value of R. So we can find this value of R as by using the journal formula 1 over r equals to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so r will be equals to r1 into r2 over r1 plus r2 this will be equals to r1 what is r1 10 and r2 is 15 10 into 15 over 10 plus 15 it will be equals to 150 over 25 so it will be equals to R will be equals to 6. So putting this value of R in this question, delta R over R will be equals to 6 into what is delta R1 square over R1 square plus delta R2 square over R2 square. So putting values as delta R1. What is delta R1? 0 0.5 square over what is r1 square what is r1 square r1 what is r1 10 and r2 is 15 sorry this will be 
R1 only, not square. Only R1. Okay. Not R1 is square, only R1. So 0 0.5 over 10 square plus 0 0.5 over uh, 15 square. So it will be equal to 6 into 0 0.5 over 100 plus 0 0.5 over 225. Taking 0 0.5 common, we get 1 over 100 plus 1 over 225. So solving this, we get delta R over R. Since we have to find the percentage error in this question. It is asking for the percentage error. So multiplying this with 100 into 100 it will be equals to solving this we get as it 0 0.4.33 so the correct answer is b 4.33 got it now moving to our next question question number 38 uh for a uniformly charged thin spherical shell, the electric potential V radially away from the center O of shell can be graphically represented as. So we have to find the correct graph for this question. It states that a spherical shell, since it is a spherical cell, means it is hollow from inside. It will be hollow from inside. Hollow from inside means inside E will be equals to 0 and inside the value of V. Suppose its radius is R. So when R is less than R, the potential V will be constant everywhere inside this spherical shell and it will be equals to KQ over capital R. And outside this, when R is greater than R, the potential V will be equals to KQ over R. So inside this spherical shell, inside this spherical shell, the potential V remains constant. But outside this spherical shell, the potential V varies inversely. It is inversely proportional to R. So, for this, the correct graph will be this, option number D. Okay, this is constant inside the spherical shell and this is decreasing as inversely proportional to 1 over R. Now, the next question, question number 39. A long straight wire of circular cross section radius A is carrying a steady current I. The current is uniformly distributed across this question, cross section. The magnetic field is. We have to find the magnetic field. So in case of solid infinite current carrying wire. So a solid infinite current carrying wire. The using ampere circuit law. We can write for when R is less than R, the magnetic field will be equals to mu naught I over 2 pi R square into R. That is magnetic field is directly proportional to R. And when small R is greater than capital R, then B will be equals to mu naught I over 2 pi R means Magnetic field B is inversely proportional to 1 over R. So the correct answer is answer number C. In the region R less than A, it is directly proportional to R. And in the region where R is greater than A, it is inversely proportional to R. So the correct answer is answer C. Now moving towards the next question that is question number 40. 
it is states that by what percentage will the transmission range of a tv tower will be affected when the height of the tower is increased by 21% so we have to find the percentage of the transmission range since the formula for the range is given as under root 2rh so here given in the question is the height of the tower is increased by 21% since the height is increasing by 21% so let us assume that the original height is h now since it has been increased by 21% so the new height will be h des h des will be equals to h plus 0.21 h so it will become 1.21 h as this will be equals to 1.21 h and we have to find the percentage by which will be transmission range of a tv tower will be affected so range original range is r and the new range will become r dash will be equals to under root 2 r into as this 2 r as this is 1.21 into h so it will be r dash will be equals to 1.1 into root 2 rh where root 2 rh is what the original range 2 rh so we can write r dash is equals to 1.1 into r so the percentage change in the transmission range will be equals to delta R over R into hundred, so it will be equals to R dash minus R over R into hundred. It will be equals to one point one R minus R over R into hundred. It will become a one point one R minus one R. So it will be equals to zero point one R. Over R into hundred, so the percentage change will be ten percent. So the correct answer is option D, ten percent. Okay. Now moving towards our next question, question number forty one, which states that the number of air molecules per cubic centimeter increased by Increase from three into ten to the power nineteen to twelve into ten to the power nineteen. We have to find the uh, ratio of collision frequency of air molecules before and after the increase in the number respectively. So, since we know that the collision frequency, we have to find the collision frequency is given by Z is equals to n pi. d square v where this n is the number of molecule per unit volume so z1 over z2 will be equals to n1 over n2 it will be equals to what 3 into 10 to the power 19 over 12 into 10 to the power 19 so it will be equals to 3 by 12 equals to 1 by 4 so Z one over Z two will be equals to zero point two five. This is the final answer. So the correct option is option A. That is zero point two five. Got it. So the next question is the energy levels of an hydrogen atom are shown below. The transition corresponding to emission of shortest wavelength is. so we have to find the shortest wavelength since we know that e is equals to h nu equals to hc over lambda so the lambda will be equals to hc over e delta e let us say so maximum energy difference will correspond to minimum wavelength so we have to find the shortest wavelength means the transition having the maximum energy will correspond to the shortest wavelength since 
we are discussing here about the hydrogen atom n equals to 1 means energy equals to minus 13.6 electron volt n equals to 2 means energy will be equals to minus 3.4 electron volt n equals to 3 means energy will be equals to minus 1.57 electron volt and n equals to 4 means energy will be equals to minus 0 0.85 electron volt. So here we can say C that the D transition that is from n equals to 3 to n equals to 1 corresponds to the maximum energy delta E. So the shortest wavelength will be of D. So the correct answer is D. Now the next question is question number 43 that is for the plane electromagnetic wave given by E equals to E naught sine omega t minus kx and B equals to B naught sine omega t minus kx. The ratio of average electric density to the average magnetic energy density. So as we know that for any electromagnetic wave for any electromagnetic wave the average electric density is always equals to average magnetic density which will be 1 by 4 epsilon naught e square is always equals to 1 by 4 mu naught b square so it will be 1 ratio 1 so the correct answer is option c 1 now the next question question number 44 a planet has double the mass of the earth its average density is equals to the that of the earth. The average density of that planet is equals to that of the earth. An object weighing W on earth will weigh on that planet. So we have to find the weigh of the object on that planet. Let us say the, uh, the planet is P and considering earth as E since the density is same on planet as well as of that earth so v density equals to mass over volume so mass over volume 4 by 3 pi r e cube it is of earth it will be equals to mass of proton over 4 by 3 pi r p cube so from here we get m e over Sorry, this R E Q 4 by 3 pi, 4 by 3 pi cancel out each other. M E over R E Q will be equals to since the mass of proton is mass of that planet. Here given that the planet has double the mass of the earth. So the mass of this planet is double the mass of the earth. So we can write it as 2 into mass of earth over R P Q. ME cancels out. So RP will be equals to 2 raised to the power 1 by 3 RE. And since we have to find the way on that planet W, so using the gravity formula G is equals to GM over R square. So G of Earth over G of that planet, it will be equals to g this will be equals same on both the planet into me over r e square into numerator g m p m p means 2 into mass of earth into r p square so it will be equals to 2 raised to the power 2 by 3 minus 1 it will be equals to 2 raised to the power minus 1 by 3. So GP becomes 2 into raised to the power 1 by 3 into GE. So WP will be equals to 2 raised to the power 1 by 3 into WE. So the correct answer is answer A. 2 raised to the power 1 by 3 W. Got it? 
Now, next question is question number 45. That is the resistivity rho of a semiconductor varies with temperature. Which of the following curve represent the correct behavior? As we know that as the temperature increases, resistivity decreases from rho equals to m over n e square tau. Since a semiconductor starts conduction more as the temperature increases, it means that resistance decreases with the increase in temperature. So as the temperature increases, the tau decreases, but n increases and n is dominant over tau. So the correct answer is answer number C. This. As temperature increases, the resistivity decreases. So, Jam, the next question, that is question number 46 of physics part, is states that a monochromatic light wave with wavelength lambda 1 and frequency mu 1 in air enters another medium if the angle of incidence and angle of refraction at the interface are 45 degree and 30 degrees respectively then the wavelength lambda 2 and frequency mu 2 of the refractive wave are so we have to find the relation between lambda 1 lambda 2 and frequency also so uh, since it is given that it is entering at an angle of 45 degree an angle of refraction is 30 degree okay so using snell's law we can write it as suppose it uh, this medium is having refractive index n1 and this medium is having refractive index n2 so we can write n1 sine 45 degree it will be equals to n2 sine 30 degree okay so what is n1 refractive index what is refractive index speed of light of air to that of speed of light into that medium into sine 45 1 by root 2 and n2 same as speed of light in air vacuum or speed of light in that medium c2 let us say it is c2 and sine 30 1 by 2 c0 c0 cancels out each other so what uh, now this c1 we can write it as lambda 1 into frequency into 1 by root 2 equals to 1 over lambda 2 into frequency into 1 by 2 this frequency frequency cancels out each other and this root 2 2 this will 1 by root 2 so we get uh, lambda 2 2 will be equals to 1 by root 2 into lambda 1 when f1 is equals to f2. So the correct answer is option A that is lambda 2 equals to 1 by root 2 lambda 1 and mu 1 equals to mu 2 that is frequencies are equal. Now next question is a mass m is attached to two springs as shown in figure. The spring constant of two springs are K1 and K2. The frictionless surface, the time period of oscillation of mass M. Since from figure, we can see that the both these springs are in parallel. They are not in series. Students always see carefully the question. These are two in parallel. So since these are two in parallel, so they will be sum out k1 plus k2 so the correct answer is d time by t equals to 2 pi under root m upon k1 plus k2 now moving towards the next question question number 48 name the logic gate equivalent to the diagram attached so here as this is the current source these are two switches let us say a and this is another switch. This is B. They are connected to an LED resistance. Okay. So let us say these are the two inputs and these are output. Okay. These are the two inputs A, B and this is output. So drawing the truth table of this input and output. So if the current is drawn from here and if we switch... 
this terminal this input a so we can write as one if the current is flowing through here a will be one b will be zeros in out current is drawn from this path so there will be no current flowing from here resistance so our y will be equals to zero and again if this is closed switch and this is open switch so if the current is flowing from this direction there will be no current here this will zero this was one this is zero and again if both are the both switches are turned off so this will be one this will be one there will be no output output will be zero one one zero and these two are open if the switch are open so here input a is zero and input b is also zero then only the current can be drawn from this direction and in this case where a is zero and b is zero then y is equals to one so we can write it as zero zero one so as we can see that in this truth table when input a is zero b is zero a is one sorry b is zero y is zero zero one zero one one zero 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 one so this is the truth table of nor gate got it so next question question number 49 an induced emf can be produced in a coil by moving the coil with uniform speed inside uniform magnetic field since induced emf e is equals to minus del phi over del t it will be equals to minus d by dt phi is equal what b dot a so e will be equals to minus a del b over del t since there is no change in magnitude speed is uniform no change in area so in uniform speed cannot be uh, induced emf cannot be produced in this coil no flux and here also moving the coil with non-uniform speed since the speed is non-uniform but the magnetic field is uniform so no flux can be produced no emf can be induced since rotating coil means area is changing so emf can be induced here in option c and area is changing magnetic field is changing so option d is also correct so the correct answer is b c and d only in c and b d only the emf can be induced in the coil so next question question number 50 that given below are two statements one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as reason r so assertion a is given as when the body is projected at an angle 45 degree its range is maximum so this is a question of projectile motion so for the ground to ground project projectile motion the horizontal range r is given by u square sine 2 theta over g and for this reason r is given as for maximum range the value of sine theta should be equal to 1 yeah this is correct when sine 2 theta is maximum means when its value is equals to 1 then only this horizontal range can be maximum so these assertion is true only when the reason r is true so the correct answer is option c that is both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of a now the next question is question number 51 that is the two identical circular wires of radius 20 centimeter carrying current root 2 a are placed in perpendicular planes as shown in the figure the net magnetic field at the center of this circular wire is dash into 10 to the power minus 8t so we have to find the net magnetic field b okay since these are two circular loops using right hand thumb rule if we are using right hand thumb rule there are two circular loops current is flowing in this direction and current is flowing in this direction so for this using right hand thumb rule the direction of magnetic field will be this p and for this loop the uh, in which the current is flowing in anti clockwise direction the direction of b is this so the net 
वैल्यू ऑफ बी विल बी रूट टू बी ओके जो हम द नेट मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ना वी हैव टू फाइंड द नेट मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इट विल बी इक्वल्स टू रूट टू बी तो लेट अस फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ बी मल्टीप्लाई इट बाय रूट टू वी विल गेट आर डिजाइड आंसर सो हाउ वी कैन फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ बी द वैल्यू ऑफ बी विल बी इक्वल्स टू म्यू नॉट आई ओवर टू आर प्लस म्यू नॉट आई ओवर टू आर solving this question this will be equals to u not i over 2 r into b not will be equals to into root 2 so mu not what is the value of mu not 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 and current given as current is root 2 ampere that is root 2 into root 2 Over two into r. What is the value of r? R given twenty centimeter means zero point two. So solving it, we get two into three point one four into root two root two into then it will be equals to ten to the power minus six. So the correct answer will be six twenty eight into ten to the power minus eight. Tesla. So the correct answer will be six twenty eight into ten to the power minus eight Tesla. Got it? Yeah. So next question, question number fifty two. A steel rod has a radius of twenty millimeter. Length this two point zero meter. A force of sixty two point eight kilo newton stretches it along its path. The end modulus of steel is this. The longitude is strain. Simply using the formula, we can find out the desired answer. Young's modulus y is equals to stress over strain. So we have to find the longitude and strain. So strain will be equals to stress over y. It will be equals to basically F over a y. So it will be equals to Sixty F is given as sixty two point eight kilo newton. So sixty two point eight into ten to the power three over area given as pi r square into y. Y value is two point zero into ten to the power eleven newton per meter square into ten to the power eleven. So this will be equal to sixty two point eight into ten to the power three over Three point one four into r square. R is given as twenty millimeter. That will be equals to four hundred into ten to the power minus six into two into ten to the power eleven. So it will be equals to two hundred over eight into ten to the power minus five, which will become twenty five into ten to the power minus five. Okay, so its correct answer will be twenty-five into ten to the power minus five. Okay, so moving towards our next question, question number fifty-three. That is, the length of a metallic wire is increased by twenty percent, and its area of cross section is reduced by four percent. The percentage change in the resistance. We have to find the percentage change in the Resistance of the metallic wire. Since we know that R is equals to rho L by A, so here given in the question is the length is increased by twenty percent. So new length will be equals to L dash equals to L plus zero point two L. Okay, it will be equals to one point two L, and the area is decreased by four percent. So A minus zero point zero four. A it will be equals to zero point nine six A. So new R dash will be equals to rho L dash over A dash. So it will become rho L dash one point two L over A dash zero point nine six A. Okay, this one point two over zero point nine six rho L over A. What is rho L over A? This is basically R. So R dash will be equals to one point two over zero point nine six R. So solving this, we will get
we will get a we will get r dash equals to 5 by 4 r so now we have to find the percentage change in the resistance so percentage change in the resistance will be delta r over r into 100 it will be equals to r dash minus r over r into 100 it will be equals to 5 by 4 r minus r over r into 100 which will become r over 4 r over r into 100 sorry r by 4 over r r so I cancel this will be equals to 1.25 r the new r dash will be equals to 1.25 r so our answer is 1.25 r got it it means the resistance is increased by 25%. So the next question is question number 54. The radius of fifth orbit of Li++ is dash into 10 to the power minus 12 meter. We have to find the radius of the fifth orbit of the Li++ since the radius R formula is given as 0 0.51 n square over z into a naught. So for li plus plus z will be equals to 3. So fifth orbit r5 will be equals to 0 0.51 into 5 square over 3 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. This will be equals to 17 into 25 into 10 to the power minus 12 meter, which will be equals to 4 to 5 into 10 to the power minus 12 meter. Now, the next question is, the particle of mass 10 gram moves in a straight line with retardation 2x. Here we are given with retardation, where x is the displacement in SI units. It's Loss of kinetic energy for above displacement is this joule, the value of n. We have to find this value of n. So, given retardation a equals to minus 2x. So, we can write this acceleration as v dv by dx it equals to minus 2x. Now, v dv equals to minus 2x dx. Simply, Solving the integral part v1 to v2, taking limit from v1 to v2, v dv will be equals to 0 to x minus 2 x dx. Solving it, we get v2 square over 2 minus v1 square over 2 equals to minus 2 x square over 2. So we will get uh, now multiplying with m on both sides as LHS as well as RHS. So m v1 square over 2 minus m v2 square over 2 will be equals to m x square. Okay. So since the mass is given as 10 gram. So solving it we will get 10 x square over 1000 will be equals to 10 to the min power minus 2 x square it will be equals to 10 over x raised to the power minus 2 so comparing it with this equation 10 over x raised to the power minus n therefore n will be equals to 2 So here the value of n will be 2. Got it? Now our next question is an ideal transformer with purely resistive load operates at 12 kilovolt. On the primary side, it supplies electrical energy to a number of nearby houses at 120 volt. The average rate of energy consumption in the house is served by the transformer is 60 kilowatt. 
we have to find the value of resistive load required in the secondary circuit okay so since for an ideal transformer for an ideal transformer input power is equals to output power okay always for an ideal transformer input power equals to output power and since power is equals to current into voltage so ip vp will be equals to is vs and the power is given how much 60 kilowatt means 60 kilowatt so input power will be equals to 60 over vp and vp is given here vs is given as this 120 volt and vp is given as 12 kilo volt okay means 12 kilo volt so ip will be equals to 60 over vp vp is what 12 kilo volt so ip will be equals to 5 similarly is vs equals to 60000 so is will be equals to 60000 over vs vs is how much 120 volt so it will be equals to five hundred. Okay. So we have to find the resistive load R S required in the secondary circuit. So R S will be equals to V S over I S. It will be equals to V S one twenty over I S sixty thousand over. 120 it will be equals to 120 over 500 equals to 0 0.240 ohm it will be equals to 240 um, got it so the correct answer is 240 240 million got it so moving towards the next question question number 57 here given that a parallel plate capacitor with plate area A and plate separation D is filled with a dielectric material of dielectric constant K equals to 4. The thickness of the dielectric material is X where X is less than D. Here let C1 and C2 be the capacitance of the system for X equals to 1 by 3 D and X equals to 2 D by 3 respectively. If C1 equals to 2 microfarad the value of c2 is we have to find the value of c2 so we know that the capacitance c is equals to epsilon naught a over d minus t plus t by 3 so at first let us solve this question c will be equals to epsilon naught a over d d given as d and minus t thickness at first the thickness is 1 by 3 d 1 by 3 d plus t by 3 means 1 by 3 d over sorry k what is the value of k dielectric constant 4 so solving this we get c equals to epsilon naught a over d minus taking 1 by 3 d common this will be equals to 1 minus 1 by 4 it will become c equals to epsilon naught a over d minus 1 by 3 d 3 by 4 it will become c equals to epsilon naught a over d minus d by 4 which will equals to epsilon naught a over 3d by 4. Okay, this is let us say equation number 1. Now the new capacitance, new capacitance c dash will be equals to epsilon naught a 
over d minus t plus t by k. The new dial, the new thickness is 2d by 3. Okay. So here we write C dash equals to epsilon naught A over D minus 2D by 3 plus 2D by 3 into K. Dielectric constant is 4. So this will be C dash is equals to epsilon naught A over D minus taking 2D by 3 common 1 minus 1 by 4. It will be equals to epsilon naught a over d minus 2d by 3, 3 by 4. So c dash will be equals to epsilon naught a over d minus d by 2. Or we can write it as 2d by 4. Okay, so it will be equals to epsilon naught a. 2d by 4 since this epsilon naught a over d since from equation 1 this epsilon naught a over 3d by 4 is equals to c so epsilon naught a uh, into 4 over into 4 over 3d will be equal to c so this epsilon naught a into 4 over d will be equals to 3c now so c we can write in place of this 3c so c dash will be equals to epsilon naught a into 4 over d equals to 3c over 2 so c dash will be equals to 3c by 2 this is our desired answer and here the capacitance c is given as 2 microfarad c1 na so c dash will be equals to 3 by 2 into 2 it will be equals to 3 so c dash or c2 will be equals to 3 this is our desired answer now moving to our next question question number 58 Two identical solid spheres, each of mass 2 kg and radii 10 cm are fixed at the end of a light rod. Let us consider this as a light rod. Two masses are attached. Mass of each solid sphere is 2 kg, 2 kg. The separation between the center of the sphere is 40. This is of 40 centimeter the moment of inertia <laughs> about an axis perpendicular to the rod since we have to find the moment of inertia of the system about an axis perpendicular to the rod passing through its middle point okay since this is a light rod so it is a massless rod so using the parallel axis theorem to current uh uh, the moment of inertia will be equals to uh, both of these moment of inertia of the two light two balls having masses 2 kg so finding the moment of inertia of one ball and multiplying it by two we get the moment of inertia of the system about the an axis perpendicular to the rod passing through its middle point so by finding one of it so we can write this as uh, moment of inertia it will be equals to by using parallel axis theorem it will be equals to 2 by 5 m r square into sorry plus m d square okay so it will be equals to 2 by 5 m r square mass is uh, 2 kg na? m r square 2 into r the whole it is of 40 centimeter and the radius this radius is 10 centimeter so this is 10 centimeter and this is 20 centimeter so basically 2 by 5 m into r square means 0 0.1 whole square plus m d m2 into d this will be equals to 
ट्वेंटी प्लस टेन थर्टी यानी थर्टी सेंटीमीटर होल स्क्वायर ओके नाउ सॉल्विंग दिस एंड मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस होल इक्वेशन बाय टू वी गेट द मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्जी ऑफ दी होल सिस्टम एज टू इंटू टू बाय फाइव इंटू टू इंटू जीरो पॉइंट वन स्क्वायर प्लस टू इंटू थर्टी सेंटीमीटर होल स्क्वायर कन्वर्टिंग इट इन टू मीटर वी गेट आर डिजायर्ड आंसर दैट इज वन सेवेंटी सिक्स इंटू टेन टू दी पावर माइनस थ्री ओके नाउ दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी नाइन A person driving car at a constant speed of fifteen meter per second is approaching a vertical wall. Let us say this is our car. A person is moving this car, and it is approaching towards a vertical wall. Okay, and it is moving at a speed of fifteen meter per second. The person notices a change of forty hertz in frequency of its car horn upon reflection from the Well, the frequency of the horn is. We have to find the frequency of the. This question is from the Doppler effect. This question is from the Doppler effect. So the car is heading towards the wall. It's let us say when it a car's horn, its frequency is f naught. So after striking the wall. Its apparent frequency. We have to find the frequency of the hall. Basically, we have to find. Let us say this is the apparent frequency. Basically, we have to find the apparent frequency minus f naught. Okay. So let us say using a small trick, we can find the solution of this question. Let us say the car is coming from this side with a speed of fifteen meter per second. instead of this vertical wall let us assume a plane mirror so we assume its image as the second car which is coming from this side it is also moving since it's the image car so it is also moving with a speed of 15 meter per second let us say it is the source and it is the observer so the apparent frequency f apparent will be equals to f not uh, since they are moving towards each other so we will write c plus observer over c minus so got it since we have to find the frequency of the horn okay so basically we have to find f apparent minus f not so it will be equals to f not C plus v naught over C minus v s minus f naught. Since the velocity are same, so we can write it as C plus v over C minus v minus of f naught. Now solving this question, since solving the question as a uh, speed is given as fifteen meter per second. And frequency is given as forty hertz. So this is forty f not taking common c plus v minus c plus v over c minus v. C cancels out each other. So f apparent will be equals to f not two v over c minus v, taking v as fifteen meter per second. and solving this equation we get f apparent equals to 420 hertz this is our final answer now moving towards our next question question number 60 which states that a pool is vertically submerged in swimming water let us say this is swimming water a pool is merged In it vertically, such that it gives a length of shadow two point one five meter. Okay, it is giving a shadow of let us say two point one five meter. When sunlight is incident at an angle of thirty degree, suppose sunlight is incident at an angle of thirty degree. Sorry, sunlight is incident at an angle of thirty degree. So. If this is thirty, this is sixty degree. A swimming pool 
if the swimming pool is filled to a height of 1.5 meter suppose this height is of 1.5 meter then the height of the pole above the water surface in centimeter and refractive index n is given by 4 by 3 now simply using the snell's law we know that n1 sin 60 will be equals to n2 sin r okay this is r so n1 means 1 into sin 60 will be equals to uh, sin r n2 sin r equals to n2 is given by 4 by 3 sin r therefore sin r will be equals to 3 by 4 into 2 3 by 2 sin 60 root 3 by 2 so we get sin r is equals to 3 root 3 by 8 this is equation 1 so cos r will be equals to under root 1 minus sin square r so 1 minus 27 over 64 it will be equals to 37 by 8 which will be 0 0.75 now from this 10 r will become this is 2 this this whole is 2.15 okay and so from this 10 r will become 10 r is equals to will become a pvp over hhb perpendicular over base so 10 r will become under root 27 by 37 okay so 10 r 10 r is perpendicular over base perpendicular over base means this perpendicular we considered it as x over base this is our base this is 1.5 so 10 r x over 1.5 will be equals to 0 0.85 so x will be equals to 0 0.85 into 1.5 it will be equals to 1.275 meters so we have to find the height of the pole above the water we have to find this height so this height will be equals to 1030 1030 will be equals to let us say its height is y y over this this how we will find this this 2.5 minus x okay so 1030 will be equals to this y over 2.15 minus x and what is the value of minus x here 1.275 so 1030 becomes y over 0 0.875 so y is equals to 0 0.875 into 1030 and it will be y equals to 0. 50 okay it's in meter so the height of the pole above the water surface is 50 centimeter this is our final answer got it